All right, what up, everybody? It was time to talk about this. If you follow me on Twitter, I well, if you follow my podcast, I've been letting people know for a while that I was going to AEW Collision. Uh, I posted on Twitter, long story short, that we went, my family and I went, we didn't really enjoy the show. My daughter did. Uh, but as far as myself, my wife, and my son, we, we didn't necessarily enjoy it. We go to a lot of wrestling. We go to AEW. We've been to Dynamite. We've been to Rampage. Uh, we go to TNA, obviously. Um, we've been to WWE, not with my current wife, but with my kids. We've been to WWE. It's been several years. I mean, it's been a really long time, actually. Uh, we've been to NWA. We go to indie shows. So we, we go to a lot of wrestling. And, you know, the, the general consensus was that this was the worst show we ever been to. And it's not to say there weren't some redeeming qualities about it. Or we didn't like the wrestlers or I'm just anti AEW. That was not the case. We, we just, I mean, it, there's always going to be a last place in everything, right? If 10 people run a race, there's someone's going to be last place. They're the worst runner. It doesn't mean they're the worst runner in the world and they're a big piece of shit. It was just the worst show we ever been to. Uh, I've stated many times over the last like half year that I I don't like the direction AEW is going and I haven't enjoyed the shows really for, for a good six, seven, eight months, but I still consider myself a fan. Like we went in AEW merch. And but what I stated in my my tweak, we got in free. Military and their families get in free. Like, why am I gonna pay for tickets if I don't have to? Okay. So we get in free. You know, I had to pay 30 bucks for fucking processing or some shit. Um, some kind of fees. I we paid for parking, but we, we didn't we didn't pay to for our tickets. And they were not the best tickets in the world. Uh I thought the house was decent. I know WrestleTix was saying two thousand. You know, it was that hard to kill. Hard to kill is what seventeen, eighteen hundred. This was not two, three hundred people more. Um, I, I really would guesstimate it was twenty five hundred. I don't really care what WrestleTix says. It was. It was like twenty five. It, it. It was. It was considerably bigger than hard to kill. There's considerably more people there, and it wasn't two or three hundred. Um, so let's talk about this, and, and I had to throw that out there first things first because i know i'm going to get people watching this video in the comments who are not who are outside of my subscriber base uh they probably want to come here talk shit whatever uh, just like they attempted to do on twitter i didn't pay anyone any mind i don't really read responses on twitter that much wrestling is a very small part of my day i know as a wrestling podcaster uh you would imagine that I, i'm sitting here and talking wrestling on all day all day and i'm really not there, there's it's it's a tiny part of my day. Uh, TNA is, is a, a company that I've enjoyed the most over the last several years. That's why I talk about it. But wrestling is a very small portion of my day, so I I do not sit on Twitter and like what what did the, the you know the crazies have to say? Like I really don't care. I have so much more going on with my personal life, um, whether it's my job, whether it's my business, whether it's my family. Uh, I just, I don't care. I don't care to read what they have to say. <laughs> it's the last thing on my mind. Um, but I, but I do want to put all this in, into context a little bit as far as when I'm saying that we just, we were bored. Well, we didn't really enjoy the show that much. And, you know, I, I got on here after hard to kill and snake eyes. And I said, and my, my kids said, and my kids are teenagers or older teenagers and not fucking children. Uh, well, no, my daughter's almost 20. My son's almost 15. Uh, I got on here and I said, this was, and they stated the same thing. Hard to kill snake eyes was the most fun we've ever had at wrestling. There's a storytelling to TNA, whether you like the company or not. This is, this is the fact. There's just a storytelling within the matches. They're not endless kickouts and near falls and, you know, no one's selling jack shit. That's not how TNA matches are laid out. So even though I kind of consider my kids more casual fans because they go with me and watch wrestling with me, but they won't turn it on themselves. You know what I mean? Uh, So they're a little more casual. So it's nothing for them to be watching a match and they don't know one of the wrestlers or maybe don't know both, but they, they leave the match as a fan or they, or they figure out someone during the course of the match that they want to cheer for. They, 
it, they are able to take in the story very fairly easily and get invested in what's going on. And that just wasn't the case with the AEW matches. There's just no story to them. And I don't mean storyline wise. I just mean the matches being told. It's just spots. It's just random matches and you can feel it. Now, if you're someone who loves just watching work rate and guys flip around and do, do this and this and grab each other's dicks, like then, okay. Yeah, you could enjoy that. But for someone who just, who doesn't need, need all that and wants to, to feel an emotion when they're watching it, it can be boring. It can be tiring when you're watching three plus hours of long matches. Everyone getting their shit in every match. It is exhausting. So the first hour we watched was Ring of Honor. And it was women's tournament matches for the women's TV title. And I do catch Ring of Honor sometimes. I do subscribe to the Honor Club. And when I'm doing nothing, I do run Ring of Honor in the background sometimes. So I have to make it clear that I did not go there just to hate on the company. Like I didn't go there with the the sole purpose and intention of coming home and saying, this is the shittiest thing I've ever seen in my life. We went to enjoy ourselves and to have fun as a family. So it starts off with the, with ring of honor and the first round matches. For those of you who watch this company, they're all jobber matches. They're enhancement talents. They're in the tournament. All four matches were AEW wrestler, women wrestlers versus enhancement talents that no one's ever heard of. I, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll pedal back a little bit on that. Three of the four matches were the fourth one was Robin Renegade was the jobber. She's a glorified jobber. Like she gets an entrance and all that, but the other three did it. The first one was Taya Valkyrie wrestling somebody. And you could hear a pin drop during this match. Like nobody cared. But the problem was these matches were all competitive. They weren't warm up matches. They weren't, you know, when someone comes out for a dark match and they wrestle a jobber and just show what they could do and just to kind of get the crowd going. That's not what this was. These were wrestlers that nobody knew in the arena having competitive matches with women from the AEW roster. So Ty Valkyrie wrestles someone. She ultimately wins. Uh, you know, and I'm in the back row, I'm pretty close to the back row. Again, these are free tickets, okay? And I can hear them crystal clear talking in the ring. <laughs> you know, it, no one cared. And then Abaddon had the next match against someone. And then uh, Red Velvet did. And I like Red Velvet a lot. And then the main event, the, I'm going to say the main event for sake of argument, was Billy Starks versus Robin Renegade. Uh, this was the best of the four matches. Robin Renegade's not bad. She's pretty good. <clears throat> Billy Starks, at one point, she took a power bomb. And it was a stiff power ball on the entrance ramp. Okay. You could hear it. They, 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 it got an, uh, a reaction from the crowd. Like, oh, I mean, a legitimate power bomb. I shit you not people. She won the match a minute and a half later using her finisher. Like that's the kind of stuff. Now, like when you, when you're my son, for instance, who is looking for more logic when he's watching this because he's not, you know, like, like there's a lot of wrestling fans that say, don't take it seriously because it's wrestling, you know, which I think is bullshit because I think the best wrestling is when they convey realism to you, whether it's the match and the emotion or the storyline, when it, when it's perceived to be real, those, those are the best moments when it, when they do stuff that's fake, that doesn't, that's not long lasting. So even, you know, my son is watching this and he's just like, shocked that she takes this like pretty big power bomb and she wins a minute and a half later. Now she's selling. I'm not going to say she wasn't selling the injury, but she should have been counted out. But of course she rolls in at 10 and then comes in and wins the match. And then they kick off rampage. Not, I'm sorry, rampage collision. And Tony Khan comes out. I, let me give you some more context here. Tony Khan came out four times during collision four technically he came out three times but the second time he comes out and he's doing his like fake deep voice and oh there's some great wrestling oh 
my son doesn't even, he's never even heard Tony Khan speak before and said, why is he talking like that? Like he's clearly trying to make his voice deep. So then I played him a video of Tony Khan's real voice and he was flabbergasted. You know, when he's talking about this great, you know, everything was great and it's a great episode and great wrestlers and great this and this and this. And he comes out and he's, oh. he was begging people to stay for Ring of Honor at the end of the show from the very beginning. So the second time he comes out, he goes, okay, you guys have a good night. Five seconds later, he came right back out and continued as if he didn't stop talking and just went on again for another several minutes. Uh, there was one time where Dasha was trying to hype the crowd and this and this, and he came out and interrupted her and just, to, and, and just like, I got this. And he addresses the crowd like he doesn't have friends. Like he's one of those people when he was growing up, his dad had to like pay people to come play with him like he he is looking for uh, a general reaction from these people and reassurance like they're his friends because that's how people with no friends act like there was a desperation in tony khan's voice with the people and he was an it was annoying it, it really was like the first time he came out was annoying and he yells so loud that uh it, it actually hurt our ears it was so loud but you can't even understand him. He's an inaudible. And there's people who've posted Tony Khan talking online before. And you know what I'm talking about because I see it in the comments. People are like, I don't know what he's saying. I mean, he's just, ooh, ooh. and it's, it's awful. And he's just rambling. The first match of this thing was a couple CMLL guys versus uh, Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli. And I told my wife, I, I bet my life that the minute collision starts, Moxley's music plays. And that's exactly what freaking happened. They come out. And this match was so bad. And again, if you like flips and dives and all that, I, I guess that's for you. But if you like selling and storytelling, like this is horseshit. There was one point where the CMLO guys, and, and some of you know this because Videos of this have surfaced on Twitter before with uh, the luchadors. There was one point where the CMLO guys, and, and again, this is probably, it's probably somebody who didn't come across on television. They tagged out while both were standing in the ring. And the ref gave them a sign that it was a legal tag. How can you watch something like that and be like, yo, what a, what a, Five star fucking match. What a four star match. It's four star horse shit, is what it is. It is five star dog shit. And then after the match, FTR comes out and they do a a brawl. They they get in the face of the Black Bull Combat Club and they brawl immediately. Now, granted, I'm not watching the company real close these days, but I do have an idea what goes on on Dynamite at a minimum from week to week. I don't recall these guys having any blood feud. Uh, uh, I could be wrong, but they come out. They start brawling within seconds. And if you watch AW, you know that every fight has a, a post-match beatdown afterwards. Happens 80 to 90% of the time. So we always know who's coming out, you know? So these guys come out. They start brawling immediately, and within 10 seconds, the jobbers, led by J.D. Drake, all run out simultaneously from backstage like they were just waiting in gorilla. You know, and again, that's logic. That's not, oh, so, so the people sit there, oh, well, it's wrestling. Don't take it so seriously. Uh, again, if it's fake, it's, if it comes off obviously fake, to me, it's bad. What was J.D. Drake from the Work Horseman doing, waiting in the gorilla area? Ten seconds into this, into this brawl, these motherfuckers with, with a bunch of jobbers come out. And it's a pull-apart brawl to start the show. For what? Why? Deanna Perrazzo had a match. I was very excited to see that she was wrestling Kiera Hogan, two girls that we love dearly. I've never heard a more dead crowd than during this match. 
there was some dead. The crowd was pretty dead during the Ring of Honor stuff to start the show. They did not care about this, and it's for good reason. There's never been a reason to care about Kira Hogan. She's never won on AEW television. Uh, she didn't even get a all elite graphic when she signed. And you know they're doing a decent job with Diana so far, but I mean, no one cared about the match. It was it was it it really hurt my heart actually as a TNA fan who. I see these girls who we love really get this this treatment of just I mean I could have farted from my seat and Deanna could have heard it. Like no kidding. It was it was insanely dead. And uh, you know, Tony Storm had a match too with Queen Aminata. And we like Tony Storm. My kids really enjoy Tony Storm. But why does it take like 12 minutes to put Queen Aminata away? Why is she having a competitive match? Shane Taylor had a match with Dan- Danny Garcia. My wife, for the life of me, couldn't understand why Shane, you know, she doesn't really know that much as far as she doesn't know every wrestler. You know what I mean? She does watch AW with me when I watch it. She wasn't familiar with Shane Taylor, who's not on TV a whole lot. She She's familiar with Danny Garcia, yes. But she, for the life of her, could not understand why Shane Taylor wasn't going to win this, you know, why he didn't win the match. He is twice his size. He had most of the offense. He was dropping leg drops that looked like his ass fell on top of his head. And then Danny Garcia wins a match. It, you know, so something like that, I mean, as a wrestling fan, you know Shane Taylor's not winning the match. But as a casual, you're like, why is this little dude beating the big dude? And that's what most of AEW booking is. The only big guy to win a match was uh, over, over a smaller guy was Brody King beating, J- uh, excuse me, rest in peace, beating Mark Briscoe. And I, I love Mark Briscoe, so I mean, this was the match I was most into, and I was hoping he was going to win. But there was some horse shit there too. I mean, this table they put on the outside that everyone knew someone was going to go through at one point, and then it happens, and it was just so I don't know. And then they beat him down after the match for whatever reason. Why does Brody King need to do a post match beat down on Mark Briscoe, um, and then? Julie Hart pulled something out. We couldn't really tell. It was like an ice pick or something. And he stabs Mark. She stabs Mark Briscoe in the head and he's bleeding all over the place in the middle of the show. So this was not the main event. This was the middle of the show in a what I perceive to be a very random match that did not need a post-match beatdown. It, it of course got one because everything does. The one wrestler who my kids really were excited for was Brian freaking Cage, who we know on AEW television is pretty much presented as a joke, even though he's a multi-time six-man tag team champion with the Ring of Honor titles. For the most part, he's perceived as, as, as kind of a joke, but for someone who watched him in Impact, he was the world champion. He was a big deal. He was the shit, and they've met him before. Really nice guy. So they love Brian Cage. He comes out and wrestles a squash match. Of all the matches, they wanted to see someone wrestle 10 minutes. (laughs) It was that one. (laughs) And he wrestles a couple job guys. He beats them, and then Hook comes down, and they fight. Everything, post-match, like, it was no It was like, we we kept saying, who's who's coming out? After every match was over, who's coming out? Adam Copeland gets in a ring and talks, and and we enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, My wife said she actually really wants to tune into Dynamite this week. She wants to see Adam Copeland's match with Danny Garcia, but in the middle of his promo, Daniel Garcia comes out. Why? Why are we he- hearing his music twice in 10 minutes? He comes out and, and they're going to have a match next week. Random, another Adam Copeland random match. Adam Copeland's a number three contender, tender Daniel Garcia. Apparently the rankings don't matter because he thinks he's the one who's wrestled for the TNT championship when clearly... Tony Schiavone had said as the number three contender because the number two is already wrestling for the international title. As the number one, number three, you can pick what title you're going for. It's either the continental title or the TNT championship. So he's in the driver's seat. Why is this this guy coming out? Because someone has to come out for everything. And, you know, Tony Khan has already come out again a couple times at this point to try to convince people to stay for freaking ring of honor. He, he goes, if you guys stay Dar- Darby Allen will wrestle in the main event. 
you know, at first he just teased that like, AW star will be in the main event. And weren't so then he kind of switched up the delivery and was like, you know, Darby Allen will wrestle. He had, <laughs> he had to, he had to let us know who he was talking about. Darby Allen will be here if you guys stay. So he's, he's, I mean, the dude is begging us to stay for this fucking show. And if I was by myself, I probably would have, but the family was kind of checked out. Um, I, every time I look at my fun son, excuse me, my son, he was playing on his phone. He's playing games. My daughter was sitting there playing and texting. They didn't do that at all during TNA, during Hard to Kill. They were engaged the entire time. They were not on their phone seeing what's going on. Yeah, I, I found myself several times whipping out my phone, you know, so just to do whatever, because I just like was not engaged with the stories that were being told. And then the main event is Orange Cassidy versus Tomohiro Ishii. My daughter loves Orange Cassidy. So she was in, she was entertained by this. But again, even my casual fan son asked why these two are fighting when they're so contrasting in styles. It, it, it was like he was really ahead of his time in saying that because I had actually just explained that to my wife. I was like, this isn't going to be good because the styles are completely different. Tomohiro Ishii wrestled a comedy match. It was stuck in first gear the entire time. They had they stopped to do the chop spot twice in the middle of the match, which completely kills the flow. You know, when you're when you're telling a story, it is like having a you know a full course meal to where you're starting off with the appetizer and starting off with the soup and the salad, and then you kind of work up to this and this and then the main cord and course and dessert. That's not the story these guys are telling. It started off comedy. It was there was a lot of comedy through the whole match, and people watching on TV don't know how sloppy this match was, where moves weren't hitting and they were taking moves like shit. Because Ishii is not built to take those moves from Orange Cassidy, and then it ultimately wins with a roll up, which is the way the night ended off a fucking roll up. When throughout the night. We're seeing competitive matches no matter who is in there. They're hitting them with everything, including the kitchen sink. They keep kicking out a two. And then that's the crescendo that you build up to. And the minute the the bell rang, 75% of the people got up to leave. Usually the people who are on screen kind of stick around. They probably pay more for their tickets. They're the, you know, the marks. They'll, They'll stick around for that. But 75% of the people got up. Tony Khan came out immediately after the show was over. I mean, immediately. And he, oh, don't go anywhere. And he is trying. And the people are still filing out the doors. And then this motherfucker, he goes, please. Please, he said. To get people to stop leaving. I understand you got to feel, you know, it, it. it's not good. Uh business to do an hour of ring of honor after your aw programming it's not but i understand why they do it they certainly couldn't do two hours of ring of honor prior or people would leave but that's that's what he got himself into because if you've watched ring of honor it's an it's two hours of wrestling but there's very few promos and stories and stuff it's just straight wrestling it can be an hour and it's but it's two hours of matches with no nothing behind them, no no fucking juice, nothing to sink your teeth in to whatsoever. So yeah, we did not have fun. My son told me at the end, Dad, I love hanging time with you. Hanging, excuse me, he told me, Dad, I love spending time with you. It's like, but this was not fun. You know, we enjoyed time because we were there as a family, but you're talking about an actual wrestling show and being invested in it. Like we just weren't. And that's okay. Not everyone has to freaking like it. But it wasn't good. It wasn't fun. Um, there was some good parts. I mean, we love, you know, Mark Briscoe coming out. He's always awesome. Freaking Tony Storm was very, very entertaining. Um, you know, there were some wrestlers we cared about. Don't freaking get me wrong. But there was, they're just matches. They're just matches thrown together. And there's nothing as in the audience unless you're into marks the mark shit if you're a mark and you're just into the work rate and all that and you don't care how much they kick out of moves and how long the matches go and everything has to be as long as possible 20 minute matches then that 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 product is for you but it's not for anybody 
I still consider myself a fan, even though I don't like what they're doing right now. But that's freaking wrestling. There's people who hated what WWE has been doing for years and they still freaking watch. I'm not in that ballpark where I'm like, I watch no matter what. I'll watch the segments and matches I have interest in and that's about it. And I'll listen to people review this show as well. Like I like to keep an idea of, or you know, keep, have an idea of what's going on with the company. But the show's bad. It was bad. And Orange Cassidy versus Ishii was one of the worst matches I've ever seen in my life. And someone who really enjoyed that match, like really need to check their temperature because that's not freaking wrestling. It's not storytelling. It's just two people fighting with completely contrasting styles and they can't take each other's shit. I think that's all I got for you guys. I've been talking about about this for about 25 minutes, but I really wanted to give a detailed explanation on why I said what I said. And um, we don't all have to like everything. I don't sit here, beg people to like TNA. I've built this channel off being so open and honest about my feelings towards TNA that people think I hate the company. I'm not a fanboy. I'm the last person that's going to get on and just watch a wrestling, decent wrestling or bad wrestling show and tell you it was good. That's just not going to freaking happen. That's all I got for you guys. Thanks for um, hanging out with me. If, if I have any other thoughts from the show that pop in my head, cause I'm just really going off the cuff here. Uh, next, in my upcoming podcast, when I'm reviewing TNA or whatever the case, I will, I will give you some of my other thoughts of the show, but um, just lots of the logical wrestling and, um, you know, for someone who's not in a wrestling bubble, it's just really, really obvious and it's really fake. And, you know, that's what it is.